Okay, here comes question three. To what extent do we have control over our mind? I consider that in most situations we have a choice of how to behave. Is that choice limited in any way by external factors? I believe that we are restricted in some ways by previous experience, but can any novel factors determine choice? So this is a big question which actually has a number of components to it, but the essential question is about free will. Does free will exist? Um, and to what extent um, is free will constrained? And then it says, uh, and to the extent that it is constrained, uh, how much is it constrained by external factors, by past factors, um, uh, uh, as opposed to presumably internal factors and, and current, and, uh, which the, the, the questioner calls novel factors, things um, happening for the first time here and now. So uh, the question is, do we have free will? And uh, the answer is yes. Um, and again, this is me speaking, but remember, uh, I'm not speaking as a philosopher or, or as a, a leader of a charismatic faith. Uh, I'm speaking from the evidence, the scientific evidence, uh, which I'm trying to set out for you um, in, this, uh, in, in this course. And uh, that scientific evidence is also filtered through, uh, hopefully, the clarity of thought that philosophy uh, uh, gives us. Um, so, um, I'm saying both uh, logically and empirically, yes, indeed, we have free will. Uh, we can make choices. But, and here comes the, uh, the second part uh, also of what the questioner is asking, uh, but, yes, free will is constrained. Free will is not absolute. Um, by, let me give us a silly example. Uh, yes, I can go into the lion's den, like Daniel, I can, I can enter the lion's den, that's my free will, to, I can choose to do that. But I can tell you the chances of me going into a lion's den are very small. Uh, you're going to have to really try very hard to persuade me to go into a lion's den. Um, although in principle I can do it, uh, in fact, in reality, I'm very unlikely to. So that's the constraint. So let's use that silly example to try and analyze what is it that constrains free will. The first thing that constrains free will is instinct. Um, the instinct of fear in this instance, uh, which comes from where? It comes from uh, the evolution, uh, ev evolutionary selection of certain brain uh, circuits which determine certain feelings, which make me behave in certain ways, uh, all of that going under the head of fear. Why? Because if I didn't have that, I wouldn't survive and I wouldn't reproduce. The, the fact that, uh, that we have built into our brains uh, these constraints that we call the instinct for fear enhances our chances of surviving and reproducing. So that's why you have to override it. It's because it's there for a very good reason. Uh, but you can override it because the override function is also there for a very good reason. Uh, it's just nevertheless uh, important to point out that it is an override function. It's something that you have to do to overcome your natural inclination. So the main constraint on free will is instinct. Uh, and they're very powerful constraints. It's very hard to act against your instincts. Um, that's why I'm saying uh, in our example, it's very hard to persuade Mark Solms to walk into a lion's den. In principle, yes, he can do it. He can override his fear, but the fear places a whopping great constraint on it. So where do the constraints come from? First of all, from instinct. Secondly, from learning. And, and learning is merely... An, a, an updating of instinct or a sort of a, um, a sort of nuancing of instinct because our evolutionary biology can't predict everything that's, that, that we're going to find in the world uh, here today. Uh, for example, it can't predict electrical sockets. There weren't any electrical sockets. They're also something you should fear. You should fear it, it, it requires a lot of free will to stick your finger into an electrical socket. You can do it. Uh, as you know, you can. But once you've had the experience of the electric shock that you get when, when you do that, it's very hard to persuade you to do it again. And that's what I mean by the updating of instincts. Electrical sockets now get added to lions uh, as one of those things that I should avoid. I can approach them, but I'm very unlikely to do it. So that's sort of the, the basic, um, the basic uh, uh, answer to the question. I haven't finished yet, though, but that's the basic answer. And my colleagues call it free won't. They're saying that the, the, the essential um, feature of free will is the ability to not act um, in an auto automatized way, automatized, stereotyped way, 
uh, determined by instinct um, and by um, emotional learning. Um, but the questioner asks one other interesting thing. They say, but uh, can't, isn't free will also determined by novel factors? Um, and in a way, I've already answered that. It, it, yes, um, you know, things that you experience that weren't predicted by evolution uh, certainly do uh, influence your free will. But the question is saying, but, but they're also distinguishing between past as opposed to present um, constraints. And, uh, and uh, I, I can address that. Uh, partly, I have addressed it again. You know, it's clear that the first time you experience an electrical socket, you don't know what it is. And so you're going to explore it. Um, if you're a little toddler, um, and then you're going to get a nice big shock, um, and then you're not going to explore it again. So, you know, you have the free will, the choice, and, and the question then, until you've learned what it does, but the question then becomes, why do you explore it? That, I think, is a very interesting question. Why do you explore it in the first place? And you certainly do. Um, all of those of you who've got or had little children, you know that the, they're, a, they're a terror. Uh, because they're always uh, exploring everything uh, that they don't understand. And the thing that makes us do that is another instinct. Um, so we have an instinct in a manner of speaking for free will, although it's only in a manner of speaking. I really am playing with words here. The instinct in question is called, well, different uh, authors uh, give it different names. Uh, the best name for it, in my opinion, is the seeking system, which is the name Panksepp gives it. Berridge calls it the wanting system. Rawls calls it the brain reward system. It's a sort of a foraging system. Um, it's, a, it, it, it's, a, it's an all-purpose appetite system. And it basically makes us engage with the world with interest and curiosity. And it makes us look for novel things. Uh, why? Because you know, all of our needs, uh, no matter what your needs are, uh, biologically speaking, they can only be met in the outside world. The outside world is where all the things are that you need in order to stay alive and to reproduce. And so we have this instinct for foraging that makes us go into the world and explore it and look for stuff to see how it works because who knows, it might meet one of our needs. Think of a dog in an open field, you plonk it down and it explores, it, it sniffs and it, and it, and, and it uh, ferrets about. Uh, wagging its tail, running around, looking at, looking to see how does all of this work. That's this novelty seeking, um, this curiosity, interest, um, uh, enthusiasm system, um, uh, which is which exists in all mammal brains. So uh, that's a complete answer um, to the last part of the question. Um, although there, uh, it's uh, once talking about free will, uh, it, paradoxically. Um, in, the, in, the, in the opposite sense uh, to how I started out when I said free will is free won't. It's the overriding of instinct and, and, and uh, instinctually based learning. Um, that's because we also have an instinct for exploring. The other instincts then place constraints on the instinct for exploring. So once the dog has discovered that um, around there is a nasty man who hits it, um, then the dog avoids that place. So its free will is then constrained by fear. Um, there you have it. That's the answer to the third question. And now we move.